Hi, everybody. Welcome to What A Week. Chris McKinnon here with John Keller for another edition. It just keeps getting busier, John. Shouldn't this be What A Year? Because this is our last segment of the year. It is, but do we have enough time to go through the whole previous year? There isn't enough time <laughs> in the cosmos, Chris. I agree with that. <laughs> too much. <laughs> too much time. Too much to cover. Um, John, let's talk about the latest in the impeachment going yeah. on. So the House has obviously uh, voted on two articles of impeachment, and now it heads to the Senate for the trial phase of this whole thing. What happens yeah. next? Well, like you know, first of all, uh, you may have seen there was this wrinkle where Nancy Pelosi is saying, I want to hear what the Senate's game plan is, mm -hmm. whether there's going to be a fair trial before I send these over. So I don't know what the story is with that, um, because clearly there's not going to be a fair trial. Right. Uh, Mitch McConnell, the Senate Majority Leader, has come right out and said, I'm, I'm taking my cues from the White House on mm -hmm. this. It's like the, uh, the judge in a trial saying, yeah, I'm, I'm collaborating with the defense, right. you know? So, uh, we'll have to see what happens with that. But bottom line is, uh, and this is a story that's going to take a while, I think, to percolate in the polls. Mm. So, uh, you know, when we, when we convene for one of these sessions, Chris, in January, maybe by about mid-January, we should do a segment on what the polls are showing sure. about how people have reacted to all this. Because trial or no trial, uh, or whether it's a sham trial or not, uh, I, I think it's going to be uh, more of a political plus for the Democrats than for the Republicans. But both bases are going to be energized mm. by this. And it's setting up the most toxic campaign of my lifetime. And I've seen some real filthy campaigns. Yeah, it's not your sin. You're not looking forward to, to dealing with the, the mess that'll happen in 2020. Uh, it's a. <laughs> Following it and covering it is a dirty job. Someone has to do it. I will do it, but I don't have to like it. Yes, indeed. The best of the best doing it, too, John. <laughs> um, let's also talk about uh, the state of the Democratic nomination going on yeah. here as we head into the end of the year. Uh, really, we've seen a lot of flip-flopping ups and downs in the top tier of, yeah. the, of this, but it has kind of been a solid separation of the top tier versus the rest. I mean, you've got four candidates who appear to be... You know, the top four mm -hmm. have been consistently the polls, Biden, Buttigieg, uh, Warren, and Sanders. Yeah. Uh, however, I would point out a couple of things. First, in Iowa, at least, Amy Klobuchar, mm -hmm. senator from a neighboring state, is you know, running five, six percent in some polls. So she's potentially right there. Yep. Uh, Iowa's known for dramatic movement in the polls yeah. down the stretch. Uh, and Michael Bloomberg is proving that money can buy, if not love, then poll numbers. He's registering in some state polls mm -hmm. at, again, 5 6%, but that's more than other candidates who've been at it for well over a year yeah. have been able to get. So anything can and will happen. Uh, you know, I think over the next few weeks, uh, accelerating after the first of the year when people start to really focus, you're going to start to see things start to shake down. You know, Elizabeth Warren, a lot of attention on her to see whether she can uh, stop her recent slippage in the polls. Mm -hmm. Joe Biden, uh, I spoke to expert uh, political activists okay. who claimed that he was dead after the first debate way back in June of last year. Well, he's clearly not. No. And uh, then uh, Buttigieg has been a surprise here. Can he sustain it? We've seen a track record of flashes in the pan in mm. primaries in both parties in recent years. I think we're going to find out soon if he's one of them. And then, of course, you know, there's Bernie Sanders, who is sui generis and is hanging in there, I think, a lot better than many of us thought that he might. Mm. Uh, and so, uh, frankly, do I get my pundit card taken away if I say I don't know what's going to happen? We won't take it away. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. It's hard to tell, right? Yeah, it is hard to tell. And uh, Iowa and New Hampshire kind of famously unpredictable. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, all right, let's bring it back here home, John. Um, yeah. Biggest political story of the year here in the state, and then, and then I guess what are we looking forward to? What are you paying attention to as we head into the new year? Well, look, one story that was huge this year and is going to be huge next year is commuting, yeah. traffic, congestion. 
I mean, it even maybe even more so than the weather. This is something that's affecting everybody. If you roll in public transit mm -hmm. into that equation, it's a mess. It's a nightmare. It's really come on strong just in the last few years. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. Uh, I'm stunned to see that more people are complaining about this in line at, at Dunkin' Donuts when I'm getting my yeah. coffee. Are complaining about this than are complaining about the weather or the Red Sox. And I never thought I'd see more whining about those to the, those topics. But so. That's going to be big this year. And, and a story that's kind of caught my eye this past year is the uh, sort of weak performance of the gambling industry in mm. Massachusetts. Encore, the big casino in Everett, opened over the summer. Yep. A lot of fanfare, gorgeous facility, pulling in, I guess, roughly half of what they projected the revenues would be in mm. the first year. That bears watching. And in the meantime, it's pulled the rug out from under MGM Springfield right. and the slots parlor at Playridge, not to mention hurting Rhode Island and Connecticut. Um, this may be a class Classic case study in bad timing, mm. trying to get on a train when it's already left the station. That's never a good thing, and that could uh, hurt some of our state budget planning assumptions, which had relied on revenues from gaming. So, have to pay close attention to it. Not a good bet, I would say. Get, right. See what I did there? <laughs> Saw what you did there. <laughs> I do have a theory why people are complaining more about commuting than the Red Sox. And What's the that, Chris? Because in New England, New Boston, you know everything's going to change. So it can always get better for the Sox, and it can always get better. Summer's right around the corner. Commuting, though, I don't think it's getting better anytime soon. Great point. May I steal that for my own future commentary? Steal it, use it. I give you permission right here. Thanks. All right, John, thank you very hey, much. Hey, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. A happy New Year to you, too. Pleasure working with you. Yeah, of course. We'll see you in 2020. Can't believe it. See you next year. We'll be kicking it off next year. Tune in. We'll see you then.